We are eternal, the pinnacle of evolution and existence. Before us, you are nothing. Your extinction is inevitable. We are the end of everything. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slutter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Galactic Versus, the series where we put two universes head to head on a grand scale. Today, the Reapers will be trying to invade the Milky Way galaxy post-Human Covenant War. Their main goal will be to harvest the Human and Covenant factions. Halo wins if the invasion can be repelled, Mass Effect wins if the invasion is successful. To make things fair, Forerunner artifacts, whether dormant or active, will not be at play here. However, any UNSC or Covenant reverse engineered Forerunner technology is available. This is an interesting matchup because it means that the Halo universe has to basically repel a Reaper invasion in a conventional way. This is something that we learned in Mass Effect at least would have been impossible even if the entire galaxy was united and obviously in that universe the Reapers have successfully invaded thousands of times. Generally, Reapers invade the galaxy when its civilizations are somewhat vulnerable, and typically there is no real opposition to the invasion. They also use their extreme intellect and their indoctrination powers to heavily weaken the galaxy before any invasions. I've done matchups before where they're able to make full use of these abilities, however today it will just be a straight head-to-head -head match. I think that will be more interesting where it's not like the Star Wars galaxy with one side having crazy numbers and space magic on their side. Let's take a closer look at the universes and we'll start first with Mass Effect's Reapers. The Reapers were a race of intelligent, powerful machine beings. They've existed for perhaps over a billion years, and while they do usually stay within dark space, they do return periodically to the Milky Way galaxy to purge and harvest any civilizations which have advanced significantly since the last purge. This has allowed the Reapers to live and add to their numbers without any major opposition. However, it has, in my opinion, caused them to fall into a major state of technological stagnancy. Arguably, that's not important as it's only really been the last two cycles where they've faced any sort of opposition. The Reapers themselves are the invading force, given they take the shape of giant starships. For that reason, we have to figure out both how dangerous an individual Reaper is and how many Reapers there are. I've consulted with my friend Daniel, who not only runs the channel Space Stock, but is also what I consider to be a Mass Effect expert. A Reaper's main weapon is known as the Magnetic Hydrodynamic Cannon. This weapon fires molten metal at extraordinarily high speeds and is devastating within the Mass Effect universe, taking out even the largest ships in a single shot. Offensively, Reapers also use the large claw-like legs at the end of their bodies to either grab and hold ships in place or to crack through the hull. Reapers also carry with them the appropriately named Oculus Fighters. Oculus function very well against both capital ships and other fighters given their powerful main weapon and strong hull. It should be noted that everything I've said so far refers to the capital ship Reaper class. These are the more notable Reapers and the ones that the games focus on the most, but there are also other subtypes including a destroyer class. Notably, the main weapon of the capital ship style Reapers has a yield in the hundreds of kilotons. The destroyers, which are less than 200 meters in length compared to the two kilometer long capital ships, are presumably a good deal weaker, but are still able to take down basically any ship smaller than a Mass Effect Dreadnought with some ease. There is also Harbinger, who was the first Reaper and the one you destroy in Mass Effect 1. However, I'm just going to assume for the purposes of this invasion that he's already been destroyed and is not present with the rest of the Reaper forces. Daniel explained to me that one of the things that makes the Reapers so powerful is their mastery of inertia. Because of their massive Element Zero cores, Reapers are able to perform crazy maneuvers at high speed. This is especially impressive given that Reapers themselves look fairly large and bulky. This speed, combined with their deadly one-shot weapon, their armor, their claws which they can use to grab and pierce ships, and really everything else, make the Reapers a very difficult to kill enemy. As I mentioned a second ago, Reapers did have very thick hulls and also possessed kinetic shielding. 
Ship-based energy weapons in the Mass Effect universe are not common, so kinetic shielding was the standard. A Reaper shields were very durable, and as we see in the final battle during Mass Effect 3, even with several cruisers and dreadnoughts, it was difficult to take down a Reaper. The last thing I want to talk about in this category is Reaper FTL. When not using Mass Effect relays, which are instantaneous, Reaper FTL tops out at about 30 light year per day. The Halo universe does not make use of Mass Effect relays, and even if it did, during an invasion, the factions would likely be willing to destroy it, given that they have fairly significant FTL of their own. The last thing for Reapers I want to talk about is numbers, and I think that this will be key in this matchup. At the end of Mass Effect 2, we see the Reaper fleet approaching the Milky Way galaxy, and it appears that there are at least hundreds of Reapers, perhaps a thousand or more. I think similar things can be said of the scale at the end of Mass Effect 3, and just generally when looking at the Reaper invasion size. We know that each Reaper is composed of the synthetic consciousness of the dominant species during the galactic purges. By the time of Mass Effect 3, there had been under 800 purges, so presumably there are around that number of capital ships. It's hard to say exactly how many destroyers there would have been, but at the Battle of Earth, for example, at the end of Mass Effect 3, we see much more of the capital ship class. I'm going to give the Reapers in total 1,600 ships, comprised of 800 of the capital ship variety and 800 of the destroyer variety. Alright, so let's now take a look at the Halo universe, and by 2558, the main two factions that the Reapers will be facing off against will be the UNSC and any Covenant splinter groups. Most of the Covenant forces by this point I'll put under the control of the Elites. However, in reality, the Covenant schism was absolutely devastating to their naval forces, and the Elites at this point only have a fraction of the full power of the Covenant available to them. Ships like the UNSC Infinity or brand new classes like the Autumn have entered service, and technology has seen a major upgrade with the integration of reverse engineered Forerunner tech. So let's take a look and examine both of these factions in a bit more detail. First we'll start with the UNSC, and as we all know, humanity was absolutely devastated by the Human Covenant War. Looking at ship types, something like the UNSC Infinity is clearly superior to any one Reaper. Its main weapon, which is supposedly more powerful than even an orbital defense platform, is likely thousands if not hundreds of thousands of times more powerful than the main weapon of a Reaper. Add in all the other Forerunner based upgrades like energy shielding and you have a single ship that can probably take down dozens of Reapers. However, when you get to the cruiser level, in my opinion, things become more interesting. I would argue that a single Autumn class heavy cruiser, the new form used by the UNSC, is probably still superior to one Reaper. I say this based mostly on the fact that it has a state of the art special Mac cannon, which is likely as powerful as the main weapons of the Reaper. However, some of the ship's other weapons, and just generally the weapons of the UNSC, will be less effective. Reaper ships have very effective point defense systems, better even than the Guardian systems used by the other races within the Mass Effect universe. In my opinion, these will be very, very effective against both the Archer and nuclear missile types used by most UNSC ships. I would guess that other ships like Valiant class heavy cruisers, Punic carriers, and the like would also be fairly effective against individual Reapers. However, when you get down to the Corvette and the Frigate level, the output of the main gun being considered is less than that of the Reaper. Reaper ships also have a host of other advantages, including the advanced maneuverability and speed, which will make them very, very effective. Besides for ship types, many of humanity's core worlds are heavily fortified with orbital defense platforms. ODPs are incredibly dangerous. They can punch through high-level Covenant cruisers with a single shot, and I'm positive they could do the exact same thing when facing Reapers. With the use of artificial intelligence, aiming shouldn't be any sort of difficulty. The only real issue that they'll have to face is being overwhelmed by sheer numbers, which is what happened during the Battle of Earth, where a relatively small-sized Covenant battle group still managed to pierce the ODP array. For more information about the general capabilities of the UNSC, I've done a ton of videos featuring many of the different ship types engaged in this battle. The main issue, however, is a lack of ships. The UNSC fleet was absolutely devastated by the Human Covenant War. I would guess that humanity had less than 20 cruisers left by that point. Now, humanity has significantly rearmed by this point and they've created new ships like the Infinity, but their numbers still aren't crazy high. Certainly nowhere near the numbers that the Covenant had before the war. At most, I would say that the UNSC has under 500 ships, with less than half of those being cruisers. 
Really, the same is true of the Covenant. Before the war, I would say that the Covenant could have taken on the Reapers by themselves. We saw individual Covenant fleets with 500 ships, and the fleet that protected High Charity was said to have hundreds of CAS class carriers. However, by the time of 2558, most of this fleet has been absolutely devastated by the Great Schism. The Swords of Sanghelios, which lead most of the elites by this point, only have a couple of CAS class carriers and have had to bring in old, previously retired ships. Most of the large Covenant capital ships would have been absolutely perfect for fighting off Reapers. The energy-based weapons would have totally bypassed their kinetic shielding, and Covenant shields have been shown to be effective against kinetic-based weapons. Individually, I would say a CCS-class cruiser, which was one of the most common ships in the Covenant fleet, would have been about equal or perhaps better given that weapon advantage than a single Reaper. However, again, the question is how many of those ships are truly available? Hundreds, if not thousands of ships seemingly disappeared by the end of the war, most destroyed due to infighting. I want to reiterate that in their prime, the Covenant could have taken the Reaper fleet. If unified under a single banner, and with all of their might available for their use, the Covenant would have taken losses, but I believe that they have more ships than the Reapers, and I believe that many of their ships were superior. CS carriers could have taken multiple ships, especially when working together, and a CSO could likely take dozens. I say that notwithstanding the speed advantage and the other advantages that the Reapers do have. However now, I sincerely doubt that the UNSC and the Covenant together can throw together even 400 cruisers of modern standard. Any remaining Covenant carriers in the state-of-the-art UNSC ships will have to do a lot of the heavy lifting, but I just don't think that that's enough. Don't get me wrong, the Reapers will take heavy losses, especially when assaulting fortified human worlds. However, I believe that they will dominate the other factions in space, and because their Element Zero cores allow them to operate almost as effectively within Atmosphere, I think they will also dominate there too. I think one of the only chances that the UNSC and the Covenant have, if they're able to set off some sort of large-scale destructive device, like a Nova Bomb. If they could somehow lure the Reapers into one place, they could perhaps destroy them with that, but I don't think that's likely. Also, in my opinion, adding to the chance of a Reaper victory is the fact that Halo doesn't really use space superiority fighters, at least not often. I think Oculus fighters used by the Reapers will be able to destroy fighters used by the Covenant and the UNSC. We also know that Oculus are able to easily penetrate the shields and armor of ships, so in my opinion both factions will have trouble defending against that. The biggest issue here faced by the Reapers is that their FTL is significantly, and I'm talking like a hundred times, slower than the Covenant and likely any new UNSC ship. Without Mass Effect Relays, it's going to take them a very long time to conquer the entire galaxy. Therein lies the one chance, in my opinion, for humanity and the Covenant. If they can both get their war machines going and start pumping out some modern ships, for example if the UNSC can finish the Infinity sister ship, the Eternity, then I think they have a chance. But as with the Warhammer 40k video I did, I think we're relying on differences in FTL, especially where one faction is forced to fight in a universe that's not their own, is kind of against the spirit of the matchup. For that reason, with FTL difficulties notwithstanding, I give this win to the Reapers, and I say just because the Covenant and UNSC forces have been so decimated by this point that they win 6.5 times out of 10. If we go pre-Covenant Schism, I think the Covenant would be able to take it easily on their own. That however is just my opinion. I know that these science fiction franchises are very very dear to many of you, so I would love to hear what you have to say down in the comments. I also just want to remind you, just because your faction wins or loses a specific matchup doesn't make it necessarily better or worse than any other universe. The power level within a universe has nothing to do with the quality of storytelling. I would also just like to give a quick shout out to Space Doc for helping me with some of the Mass Effect information. You can find his channel down in the description. Make sure to check it out if you like science fiction, and especially if you like starships. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you. Thank you.